Overlaid text can tell the audience simple information, like the location or date of a scene, or can be as elaborate as the opening crawl in Star Wars. Whatever you need to communicate, there's a simple format to ensure your reader understands your intention. To superimpose means to place one layer above another. In filmmaking, any text added over a scene is superimposed. You can write this superimposed text directly into your description as you see fit, as long as you make it clear that the text is overlaid on the scene rather than in world. This usually means incorporating some sort of technical direction, like a caption. We might think we're in Shanghai until we see a caption. Birmingham, England, 1919. Or something like on screen. We're actually seeing the thwips on screen. And since the text is meant to be read by the audience, it's usually also a good idea to indicate that by wrapping it in quotes or using some other easily identifiable style. But by far the most common technique you'll read for superimposed text is simply starting a line with the all cap technical direction, superimpose. A pair of oversized headphones worn by Andre Young, better known as superimpose, Andre Young, AKA Dr. Dre. Though it's commonly shortened to just super. Either way, it's followed by a colon and then the text itself. Because these are so clearly identified, quotation marks around the text aren't always necessary. It is somewhat common to see the text written in all caps, but again, it's not required. Whether you end the text with punctuation is also up to you, but it's usually ignored when the text is added in post-production. So if it is important in your case, you might want to make that clear by using quotation marks. In some situations, it might make sense for the text to be broken into multiple lines. Super. Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss received a settlement of $65 million and signed a non-disclosure agreement. In this case, the text itself is often given its own paragraph, usually centered or indented below the super direction. If you want your text to appear over black rather than over a shot, you can choose a transition to black, add your super, and then transition back in. Over black, super. This is a true story. The events depicted in this film took place in Minnesota in 1987. At the request of the survivors, the names have been changed. Out of respect for the dead, the rest has been told exactly as it occurred. Fade in. Some writers instead use title card or just title to indicate white text on a black background. Title. The enemy have driven the British and French armies to the sea. But other writers use title and super almost interchangeably. Title. Moscow, April 26, 1988. So to avoid confusion, you're probably best off reserving true titles for before the opening fade in or between scenes. Title card, the land of the Rus. If you put one in the middle of a scene, people will usually just assume you meant it to be a super, unless you clearly indicate the transitions into and out of black. If you want to indicate a text scrolls up the screen, you can simply describe the movement in the flow of the description. The boundless heaven serves as a backdrop for the main title, followed by a roll up which crawls into infinity. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Luke Skywalker has returned to his home planet of Tatooine in an attempt to rescue his friend Han Solo from the clutches of the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. But more commonly, you'll see this indicated by a technical direction like title crawl, often shortened to just crawl, used just like you would a super. In all honesty though, this isn't a technique you'll likely want to use, as it's become almost inseparable from Star Wars. Chirons are formatted in the same manner as titles, but their meaning is just as muddled. Some folks say Chirons include any text in the lower third of the screen. Freeze frame on Buster, Chiron, Byron Buster Blue, graduate student. Others use them interchangeably with superimpose. Chiron, the year 2020, one year after the virus. Regardless, or maybe because of the confusion, Chiron is rarely used in modern screenplays, and it's likely best to avoid it. Closed captions are another sort of overlaid text, but they aren't something you'll need to worry about as a screenwriter. Closed captions are intended for viewers who have trouble hearing the audio, and include both dialogue and sound effects. While subtitles are similar, they only include the dialogue and actually are worth thinking about as screenwriters, because they're meant for the viewers who can't understand the dialogue or text on screen, usually because it's in a language foreign to the audience. And we'll actually be covering how to write foreign languages as a part of the dialogue portion of this series, which begins with this video covering the basics of writing dialogue in screenplays.